Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and today I want to talk about a simple way to convert fluorescent light fixtures to using modern LED tubes. Now you might be wondering why you would want to do this because of course fluorescent light fixtures are supposed to be energy efficient and they provide nice light and Bob's your uncle, right? Well it turns out that modern LED tubes for fluorescent fixtures are uh, actually more energy efficient. They use approximately two and a half to three times less power. They output the same amount of light, so of course the brightness in lumens is, is essentially equivalent. Uh, they also contain no mercury. Uh, LED tubes also dim less over time. You may have noticed that fluorescent lights, uh, the, phosphors on the, the phosphor coating on the inside of the tube tends to wear out over time. They get dimmer and dimmer. LED lights also dim, but they dim less than fluorescent tubes do. And finally, uh, you also may have noticed that fluorescent tubes tend to flicker, especially as the tubes age. LED lights, uh, there's a tiny, tiny, like, millisecond delay. The lights come on, they're instant on, and they stay instant on for the entire life. When the tube dies, usually all the LEDs go kaput, and you know it's time to replace the tube. Okay, so that sounds good, but what's the problem? Because with an incandescent light bulb, as you know, uh, you have a little screwy any bulb, it's incandescent, you unscrew it, you put an LED equivalent bulb in, and you're done. The problem with fluorescent fixtures is that they have things like ballasts and starters. Now, you don't actually have to understand what that all means. What you do need to understand is that not all fluorescent light fixtures are created equal. Uh, unlike an incandescent bulb, you don't just have live or hot and neutral two wires, AC, going to two contacts on your bulb, and boom, you're done. With fluorescent fixtures, you have two pins on either side of the tube, and there's a ballast which regulates current and voltage and blah, blah, blah. There's a starter. Uh, sometimes there are electronic ballasts that uh, provide, like, a pulse of electricity to, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all very complicated. In fact, there are uh, four general types of fluorescent fixtures. There are two general types of... Uh, ballasts inside fluorescent lights. There are uh, not only different types of starters, but different uh, methods of starting a fluorescent tube. Some give you instant on, some prolong the life of the fluorescent tube. So the problem is that it's kind of complicated. You can't just buy the LED tube, stick it in, and you're done. Uh, so what do you do? Well, in recent times, there have been new LED tubes that have come out, and they are called 3-in-1 tubes, or so-called universal uh, LED tubes for fluorescent light fixtures. And the idea here is that you don't have to care what kind of fixture you have at first. You simply buy the 3-in-1 tube, the proper length, the proper diameter, pins, everything, and once you get the tube, you open it up and you have instructions in there, and the instructions will tell you, okay, here's what you need to do. Figure out the kind of ballast you have, figure out if it's, you know, magnetic or electronic, and da-da-da-da. And they'll give you directions on how to actually modify your fixture or not to make the LED tube work. So that kind of sounds good, but why might you not want to use these 3-in-1 or universal LED tubes? Well, it turns out that in many cases, you will actually be using the LED tube, like this one, and they come with their very own starter, and all you have to do, if I can get it off, all you have to do is insert the tube and insert this different starter, and poof, you're off and running. So the problem with these 3-in-1 or universal tubes is that in many cases you're going to be leaving the ballast inside the fluorescent light fixture. What that means is that power will be flowing through the ballast and then to your LED tube, and this may seem like okay, it's convenient, and it's quick, and it's easy. But in the longer term, what often happens is the ballast will die. Because the fluorescent light fixture is old, the LED tube is new. Power is still flowing through the ballast in order to power the LED tube, even though it doesn't need to be, because LED tubes do not require ballasts and starters. So, in short, the ballast dies, your LED tube stops working, you buy a new replacement LED tube thinking that that's the problem, when in fact, no, it's actually the ballast inside the fixture that's gone ahead and died on you. Uh, furthermore, because the ballasts are still powered, there are things like um, EMFs generated and uh, power losses, and it just doesn't make very much sense because the LED universal tubes are handy and convenient at first, but in the longer term, it's better if you simply rewire the fixture. The problem is, of course, that this, until now, has been very difficult to do. 
So, without further ado, I present Scotty's Guide to Fluorescent to LED Conversion. Step number one is to check the tombstones on your fluorescent fixture. Now, the tombstones are these, these little bulb holders on the end here. There's one on each end, and it looks kind of like a tombstone, hence it's called a tombstone. In order to do this, you're going to have to uh, cut the power to your light fixture. If it's plugged in, just unplug it. If it's on a light switch, go to your circuit breaker panel and flip breakers off until you discover which breaker powers the fluorescent fixture in question. Make sure you cut the power because you're going to have to open up the fixture and poke around inside. Don't worry, it's not that complicated. So first you cut the power and then you're going to need to investigate inside the fixture. What exactly are you looking for? Well, it turns out that you need to decide whether you have shunted or non-shunted tombstones. You need to do this before you buy your LED tubes, before you do anything. So here you can see on the left you have a shunted tombstone that has typically only one wire going to it. On the right you have a non-shunted tombstone, which typically has two wires going to it. Well, why is that? Now perhaps it makes sense. On each end of the fluorescent tube there are two pins. In a shunted tombstone, the two pins are actually electrically connected together, often inside the tombstone itself. A non-shunted tombstone has, uh, has two wires going into it, in this case blue and red. One of those wires goes to one pin and the other wire goes to the other pin on the fluorescent tube. That's a non-shunted tombstone. So shunted, one wire, non-shunted, two wire. Now, if you open up your fixture and you see tombstones in this configuration, perhaps you have um, a fluorescent fixture with two or three bulbs in it, if you see several tombstones shunted together with a single wire like this, daisy-chained together, then you know that you have shunted tombstones for sure. Okay, so why does this shunted and non-shunted tombstone thing actually matter? Here you can see a single-ended and a double-ended LED tube. Now this is what you're actually trying to decide. Depending on the shunting of your tombstones, you will buy either a single-ended LED tube or a double-ended LED tube. So let's take the single-ended first up top. Usually single-ended LED tubes have either like a gray band or usually a label on one side of the tube and in small print on that label it will say AC input. So what that means is that when you rewire your fixture what you're going to do is on the left side here for single-ended you're going to hook live to one pin and neutral to the other pin. The pins on the other end of the single-ended tube are unused. Now down below we have a double-ended LED tube and as you can see this is a little bit different because with a double-ended LED tube live goes to one end of the tube, either one or both pins, and neutral goes to the other end of the tube. Kind of like a battery where you have plus on one side and minus on the other side. And now we can see why this actually matters. If you have non-shunted tombstones, i.e. with two wires going to them, then you should probably go ahead and pick a single-ended LED tube. If you have shunted tombstones, then you must use a double-ended LED tube. Whew, okay, so now you've determined do you need double-ended or do you need single-ended. Uh, there are a few other things to consider. Obviously you're going to need to know the length of the tube. Uh, in Europe it's usually in millimeters. Uh, in the US and North America it's usually one feet, two feet, three feet. Uh, sometimes they're called T5, T8. You can usually take the fluorescent tube that you have, look at it, it's going to have some stuff printed on it, and you're going to need, use, you're going to, need to buy that size of LED tube and now you also know you should search for single-ended or double-ended de depending on the type of tombstones that you have. There's one other thing you need to consider as you're selecting a particular LED tube and that is the color temperature. So what the heck is color temperature? Color temperature is essentially the color of the light. As you can see on the, the far left we have warm white which is about 2700 Kelvin and it goes all the way up to 6500 K which is a very bright daylight. And in the middle we have 4000K, which is cool white. Now, many LED tubes are 6500K, and you might think, well, the brighter the better. Uh, well, okay, which color temperature to choose? If you get 2700K, that's sort of a yellowish light, and it's more like an incandescent bulb, which you might think is good, but uh, in most cases you're going to use fluorescent light fixtures in things like workshops or closets or and you're probably going to be used to the, the sort of cool white light, which is 4000 Kelvin. 
As I said, many LED tubes are also 6500K, but as you can see on the chart here, 6500K is actually, uh, we'll call it brighter or more blue than even sunlight. Sunlight is about 5500 Kelvin or thereabouts. So if you're used to fluorescent light fixtures, typically you're probably going to be happiest with cool white, which is 4000 Kelvin. Okay, so you did step one. You checked your tombstones. You determined if you need single-ended or double-ended LED tubes. Uh, you decided on your color temperature. You've then completed step two, which is to select and buy the proper LED tubes, uh, and they've actually arrived. So step three is to actually go ahead and install them. So how do we do that? So here I have uh, a lovely fluorescent light fixture. This is actually uh, quite long, so uh, it's the only one I have. And we have a fluorescent light in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. There you go. There's the fluorescent light glowing, but I don't like that. Uh, I want to convert this to LED. So what I'm going to do is rotate the tube and remove it. Now you'll have to remove the cover. In this case, uh, we have little screws here. So I'm just going to remove those really quickly so we can see inside. And now we pop the cover off. Now you can see here that I have tombstones here and there are two wires going to it. And on the other end, I won't show it to you, but it's the same thing. Two wires are going to each tombstone. So here we can see we have power coming in there. You've got a bunch of wires running everywhere. Uh, I've just wired up a, a plug temporarily. This would actually be your AC power coming in. Normally you'd also have a ground wire, which I don't have because I'm just using a temporary two prong plug. And this is your domino where this is power in and this is power out. And of course they're labeled L and N for live and neutral. So, okay, what do you do? Well, the first thing you want to do is we've determined that this is a non-shunted tombstone, so therefore I have already selected my single-ended LED tube, and all I'm going to do is decide, well, which wires do I want to hook where. Now, these wires actually go into the ballast, and they're actually short. So you can see, if I were to disconnect these wires from the ballast, they wouldn't reach to the AC input over here. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to take my snippers, and this tombstone will be this tombstone right here. Hello, there we go. This tombstone will be unconnected. So I'm just going to snip the wires. There you go. That tombstone is now no connection for my single-ended LED tube. On the other side, I have my other tombstone. And we have two wires running all the way, all the way over, right past the AC input here. So here what I want to do is again, the ballast is over here. I'm going to just going to snip those wires off. I'm going to remove the live and neutral connections. I should probably use a slightly smaller screwdriver. And now these two wires are coming from my tombstone on this side, so I'm just going to snip them and then connect them into the power here. Now these two blue wires are going to the tombstone over on this side. Uh, it doesn't matter which is live and which is neutral. As you'll see, they're both blue wires. And when you're inserting your single-ended LED tube, there are the two pins on one side. One can be live, the other can be neutral. It doesn't matter. You can just reverse them. So I don't have to really care about that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and screw one to neutral. And the other... If it would go in, and I'm going to screw the other to live. And there you go, we're done. We now have AC power coming in, 
which goes to these two wires and that moves way down here to this tombstone so this tombstone now has live and neutral and the tombstone on the other end is completely disconnected and of course our lovely ballast here it's been snipped and it's completely disconnected. If I wanted to, I could just unscrew this and remove it entirely from the fixture. This end has AC power going to it, and you can see here I have my single-ended LED tube. So I'm probably going to want to get a marker and just write AC on here. These tubes actually usually come with a sticker. You put the sticker on the fixture, and it says, like, oh, this is LED only, and insert, uh, you can see the little arrow there, mains input. That has to go here. Just use the included sticker, put it on this side of the fixture because this is the one that's actually powered by AC, and you're done. Also note that with these LED tubes, you can see there's a line on one side and no line on the other. Uh, this is just a glass tube, and that line there is actually a strip of LEDs. So when you insert it, you're actually going to want to insert it such that the line of LEDs If I could get it in, the line of LEDs, which is up here, ends up on the bottom, so the light will actually shoot this way. If you put it in upside down, your LED strip is going to be here, and it's going to light in that direction towards the ceiling, which obviously is bad. So that's it. We're done. Let's plug her in and see if it works. Ta-da! LED conversion complete. And there you have it. It's beautiful. Okay, so that's for a fixture with a single tube. What if you have two or three uh, fluorescent tubes in your fixture? Well, in that case, uh, the wiring is pretty much the same. In the top here, you can see a single-ended example with two tubes. Uh, all you're going to do is tie live and neutral to one pin on one of the bulbs and live and neutral to the other pins on the second bulb. Uh, it's the same as if it's a single tube, you just have a few more wires to connect. On the bottom you can see a double-ended example, and again, it's the same as if you have a single tube. Live goes to one end of each tube, and neutral goes to the other end of each tube. And you can wire that up, uh, well, however you want, as long as live goes to one end and neutral goes to the other. And finally, uh, many LED tubes, if you actually measure the, the end of the tube that is not connected, where the pins say unused, you can actually wire the fixture in such a way that you don't have to worry that your AC input is always at this end. So how does that work? This is wiring for a reversible single-ended LED tube. Now, of course, this is just a standard single-ended tube, but you'll notice that if you wire this differently, instead of putting live and neutral to only one end of the tube, you can run a live wire from the left side all the way to the right side, and then you notice here the two unused pins you have to make sure that those unused pins are actually shorted together. And you can do that with uh, a digital multimeter. You just check for continuity, and if inside the bulb those pins are shorted together, you can wire your single-ended LED tube this way. Uh, if you want to do a little bit of extra wiring, you can actually make it so that you don't have to put a label on the fixture, and you can put a replacement LED tube in however you want. But of course, that only works for single-ended LED tubes. Okay, so there you have it. One final reminder. These uh, old fluorescent tubes, uh, they contain mercury, so you don't want to break them, and when you are done with them, when you've completed your retrofit and you have your LED tubes installed and working, uh, don't just throw these in a garbage can, you must recycle them. And then you can rejoice that you no longer have to ever worry about breaking a fluorescent tube, because now you have all LED tubes, and everything is bright. For more techie tips, see Scotty's Techs on Info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.